Hello, and welcome to another Argocom presentation, this time about Argo Rollouts, my favorite project, because everybody's speaking about Argo CD. So, my name is Gostis. I'm working for Octopus Deploy as a developer advocate. I'm part of the Argo team, focusing mainly on Argo Rollouts, but also Argo CD. And with me, normally I would have Anastasia, who works at British Telecom, and she's an SRE. But unfortunately, there were some issues with your visa, so it's just me. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Argo Rollouts and what you need to adopt Argo Rollouts in your company, and more specifically, the requirements and what you need to do regarding metrics. And we're going to see some common pitfalls and mistakes. Um, so let's start with a problem. This should be a familiar story to everybody. Developers say, oh, we have the best release ever. It's great. They deploy it. Then something bad happens, users are complaining, and then somebody, either the developers or you, uh, they go and fix the mess. Okay, super familiar. And at this point in time, the company says, okay, we need something else. So they will say they will add metrics. So you spend some time to look at open telemetry and add metrics, traces, and logs, and you spend so much time for this, and it works. No, it doesn't. You have metrics, but you have an actual human looking at them. So you make a deployment at 3 o'clock, and then somebody's looking at the metrics, and then somebody's looking at the metrics, and is looking at the metrics. And as everybody knows, this is one of my favorite things, to look at the metrics after a deployment. Yes? Of course. Nobody likes to look metrics at deployments. This is not why we have humans. What we need instead is to deploy at 5 o'clock on Friday, and then go to the pub. And I'm mentioning the pub because Anastasia lives in the UK. This is her slide. But you can replace the pub with playing video games, go spend time with your family, go sleep, go see a movie, go do something else. This is our goal for today's presentation. This is the goal. We want to go to the pub. So how can we do this? Uh, we can work with metrics. And metrics, you know, are uh, helping you in several areas. They can detect errors for you before users. Uh, they can help you with monitoring, but the thing we're going to talk about today is for automated rollbacks. We want to use metrics for automatic rollbacks. So instead of having a human looking at metrics, we want to have another system, and in our case it would be Argo Rollouts, and it will look at metrics for us. And then that system will make a decision, and it will say, okay, the deployment has finished, and it's successful, I'm done, or the deployment has finished, but there is an issue, and we need to roll back. That's the end goal. So we will keep the same process that you already have. So you compile your code, you check out the code, run unit tests, integrate, integration tests, deploy. But then we will insert Argo rollouts, and it will make the decision for us. It will check the metrics that you already have, and it will either say, yes, everything is fine, or no, things are bad, let's roll back. So Argo rollouts, the best project of all the Argo family. Uh, this is the main website. If there is one slide that you need to keep from this presentation, it's this one. Argo Rollouts is a standalone project. It's self-contained. And I'm mentioning this because sometimes I talk with a company and they describe the problem and I say, wow, Argo Rollouts is perfect for you. And they say, but we're not using Argo CD. That's not a problem. You can use Argo Rollouts on its own. Of course, you know, it makes sense to use it with Argo CD, but it, this is not a requirement. And unlike Argo CD, you need to install it per cluster. That's how Argo Rollout uh, works. So what you can do with Argo Rollouts? You can do progressive delivery. And because progressive delivery means different things to different people, in the context of this presentation, progressive delivery means um, blue-green deployments, where you have a release, it's running, users are looking at it. Then you start a new version without any traffic, and then you can run some tests there or look at the metrics. And then at some point when you are happy, you say, okay, this looks good, and you redirect the traffic. Canary releases are similar, but instead of having a switch just one time, you have a gradual way of moving traffic to the next version. So you start with 10%, 20%, 30%, and so on. And you can also do A-B testing, which we're not going to talk about um, today, but it's an interesting topic as well. So the way Argo Rollout works is that it offers you a new way to define your deployments. Either you take an existing Kubernetes deployment and you extend it, 
or you create a rollout and you reference another deployment, and it works the same way. So this is how it looks. The file that you are looking is a typical Kubernetes deployment, but you can see it's a rollout, it's not a deployment. Most of the fields are exactly the same as the deployment, and there is a brand new field called strategy, which in this case says um, do a canary and start with 10% of the traffic and then pause. So this is how you write a rollout. There is also a UI uh, which you can use. So in this example, a rollout has started and the new version takes 20% and then it's paused. You can see this on the left. And then at the bottom, you can see the pods for the new version and the old version, and you can see what is happening there. So what are the minimum requirements? Let's say that you believe that Argo rollouts is the best idea ever. You go back to your company and you say, let's adopt it. What do you need to do? And I'm sorry to say this, but adopting Argo rollouts is easy if you already have the requirements in place. So first of all, you need to talk with the developers. You need to tell them what you're going to do and ask them. The first question is, can the application run twice? You need to have the same instance of the application twice because this is what happens with Canaris and Blue Greens. And several applications support this. But some old applications or legacy applications might not support this, especially if they have some kind of uh, shared resource somewhere. So ask this question first. Also, I've seen some companies and they try to use Argo rollouts for uh, infrastructure applications like Cert Manager, Core DNS, and stuff like this. No, this is not how you do it. You use Argo rollouts for your own applications, the applications that your developers create. And the big question is whether you have your metrics. So how many people can say that this is true for their company today? Not a lot of hands. Okay, you are in the correct presentation. So you need to have metrics that tell you in 15 minutes, not two hours, not two weeks, not two days, if a deployment is successful or not, and without a human. It's not, you know, George is sitting at his desk and he says, yes, it's okay, or somebody else. It's Argo Rollouts can say this. So this is the most basic requirement that you need to have in place in order to adopt Argo rollouts. If you have this, then Argo rollouts gives you the capability to decide exactly for each application what success means to you. So you can come and say, look, for this application, I make a decision and I say that success for me means that 95% of requests succeed. And if you know the number goes lower or upper, I can make a decision. And you can make a different decision for an application or you can combine, let's say, uh, requirements and say for this application, if this happens and that happens, then it's a success. Or if this happens or that happens, then it's a success. There is great flexibility there, but you need to have the metrics in place already. So Argo Rollouts on its own has support for several metric providers. And if your solution is not in one of these, you can also do custom stuff. So you have your capability to run a custom job that makes the decision for you if the deployment is successful or not. So this is how it looks here. I have an example. There is another resource called Analysis Template. And in this example, I'm asking my Prometheus instance. And I'm saying that for this particular application, Success for me is, um, if I remember correctly, if 95% of the requests return 200 in the HTTP code. That's the thing I selected for this application. So Argo Rollouts will automatically ask Prometheus whether this is true or not. If it's true, the deployment is successful. If it's false, the deployment is not successful. And Argo Rollouts will make the decision, not a human. Okay, so let's say you don't have the metrics in place. What metrics do you actually need? What do you need to do? Uh, this is probably the magic sauce of Argo rollouts, the selection. There are you know, several capabilities there and several decisions with the team. Uh, there was a suggestion to use the use method, which is utilization, saturation, and errors. Uh, this is usually coming from uh, hardware, so maybe it's not you know, applicable to, to software. But if you have some kind of application and it matches this, maybe it has an internal queue, you can use it. The recommendation specifically for web services is the RED method, which is rate, errors, and duration for each service. So you get how often you know the service is used, if it's successful or not, and how long it takes for a request uh, to happen. So if you have these metrics already, that's great. If you don't have them, you can cheat. So here is an example from uh, Linkerd. 
which is a service mesh, and if you install Linkerd in your cluster, you automatically get all these metrics from all your applications. The screenshot is the, the Linkerd dashboard, and SR means service liability, which is the rate of errors, uh, RPS is rates per second, which is rate, and P99 is the duration. So there are even you know, ways to get these metrics for free, even if your developers don't have the time or the capability to implement them. Now, specifically for end users' applications, like if you have you know, applications with real humans, you should look at metrics that make sense for the humans. So in this case, I have an example for an eShop application, and I want to know how many people go into the eShop, what products they put in the basket, how often they buy, if they make payments. This is the things that matter, because if my internal metrics say that the application is successful, but users cannot buy something, then the deployment has failed, obviously. Okay, so let's see some use cases. Um, the best case scenario is that your application actually has metrics on its own. There is a slash metrics endpoint. It exposes the metrics that you need. That is best case scenario, and this is what you should try to do. If this is not true, as I said, you can cheat and do something like this. So you put Linkerd in the middle, and then it provides the metrics for your applications. Um, or you do something like that. This is actually what Anastasia is trying to do right now at British Telecom. Uh, they don't have metrics on the applications themselves. They have an elastic search instance, and then it makes a decision about success. But right now, they have a human in British Telecom looking at elastic search for two hours to decide if something is correct or not. And if everything else fails, you can do something completely custom, so you can run your own smoke test that tests whatever you want to test in the application and make the decision if the, if the deployment is successful or not. So some common mistakes. Um, first of all, you need to have metrics, okay? <laughs> That's obvious. Uh, but most importantly, you need to have the correct metrics. Several people either don't have metrics at all, or if they have metrics, they don't trust the metrics. So who here trusts their metrics and believes that all alerts are actionable and everything is correct? <laughs> yes, you are in the correct presentation. Um, so you need to have metrics that you trust. That's a, a big uh, decision. And also you need to, to automate everything. I also consider this an important thing because several times I talk with a company, they have a process in place. It's fully manual. So you can see all the humans here. A developer commits, then an operator makes a deployment, then somebody makes the switch, and they find Argo rollouts and they say, oh, this is great, let's adopt it. And they adopt Argo rollouts only for the traffic switch. So they use Argo rollouts only to make uh, the canary you know, progress or the blue green to progress. That's not the correct way to do it, because you still have humans in the loop. The correct way to adopt Argo rollouts is to automate everything. So you see in the last step, Argo rollouts makes the decision for the deployment, not a human as it was here. And of course, you must also automate uh, the deployment itself with Argo CD in this instance, but with anything else uh, you can use. So that's how you adopt Argo rollouts. So what have we seen today? You need to have fully automated rollbacks without any humans. Uh, you need to test your applications, see if they can be used for progressive delivery. You need to talk with the developers. Yes, I know it's hard, but talk with the developers. Explain what you are going to do. Ask them if the application supports what you are trying to do. Ask for their help. Ask them to put metrics in the application. Remember, this is the best case scenario that the application itself has metrics. Ask them to put relevant metrics, metrics that you trust and can actually tell you in an automated manner if um, this deployment is successful or not, and then automate the whole process, not just the traffic switch. Because remember, we want to go to the pub. Uh, this also answers another classic question, if you should deploy on Friday at 5 o'clock. Yes, you should deploy on Friday at 5 o'clock. If you adopt this uh, process, it doesn't really matter when you deploy. Because you deploy at 5 o'clock, then you go to the pub, and while you're at the pub, either Argo Rollouts makes the decision for you and says everything is fine, or Argo Rollouts makes the decision for you and says the deployment has failed and it rollbacks, and you are still in the pub, okay? So you deploy at Friday at five o'clock. Um, I know that you know metrics is like a big discussion. It's not something that we can cover in a single presentation. 
and it's also a big question how you create your metrics. Uh, you can read these books. They go into many more details about what to measure and what kind of applications uh, you need to instrument and what metrics you need to put uh, there. And uh, Anastasia is not here with us and it's pretty disappointing, not only because she's not speaking about what she's seeing in British Telecom, uh, but also because she was just announced as the first ever deaf uh, CNCF ambassador. So it's a big milestone uh, for her. Congratulations. Maybe in the next presentation we'll do what she actually did in British Telecom and see you know, if it succeeded or uh, not. Uh, she's part of a new group um, which is called the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Working Group, which is part of the CNCF. Uh, if you want to see what the group is doing, you can start by the um, uh, Slack channel where you can join and see the discussions uh, there. We are even so happy that we have some members of the group uh, right there and you can see the rest of the presentations uh, that you can look at for them at uh, KubeCon. Uh, it's pretty important because KubeCon is one of the few, I would say, right now, conferences that is really trying uh, to help this group, and you should also help them, you know, connect a network. A conference is not just the presentations and keynotes. A conference is also the networking and how you talk with other people. Uh, so you'll also see uh, translators, American Sign Language translators, that they are with this group. Uh, you should try and approach them. There is also a booth or a kiosk in the Project Pavilion about this booth. And I would recommend you go at the very least in the sign language crash course to see what it uh, happens. If you ever, you know, watch the news and you see people signing and you always ask yourself, what is this? What are they uh, talking about? This is your opportunity to, to see how it looks. So thank you. These are some resources. Uh, if you have any questions, we have enough time, either for the working group or for Argo Rollouts. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Uh, yes, you should go to the microphone. There are two microphones there that you can ask. Uh, yeah, uh, so I think uh, some time back, uh, we thought it will be useful in our application. and. Uh, but our application is running as a stateful set, and that was not supported by Argo CD rollout. So I'm wondering if there is any change or plan to support stateful sets. So yes, one of the most commonly mentioned issues right now in Argo rollouts is stateful sets. Right now it's not supported. I'm not certain if somebody is working um, on this, but it's a pretty big change. We have customers, when I say me and when Codefresh, who are asking for it, but it's not something simple that can be done like in an instance. Uh, I can ask, I'm, I'm not certain that somebody is working on it, but my argument there would be that people haven't even finished adopting Argo rollouts for stateless sets, <laughs> okay? So before we spend some effort as a team to work on stateful sets, Let's help people with this talk to adopt them in the simple case. OK, thank you. I, uh, I, very interesting. It's like the next step for us. I'm mostly in the observability part, and this I didn't want to miss. Um, do you enrich your metrics with the information of this is the canary or not? How do you go about making that metric useful to feed into the decision to roll back or not? Because you don't want like to, to wait for deploy half of it until you have 5% errors, right? Uh, first of all, there is a capability in Argo Rollouts that you can do a dry run. So you tell Argo Rollouts to look at the metrics, but don't actually do anything. So my recommendation is to start here. So maybe you know you go into production and do this kind of simulation. So instruct Argo Rollouts and say, if I told you right now that these are my metrics, and this is my decision and my numbers, what would you do? And then it would give you an answer without touching actually production. So then you could look at what you know is happening in production and then you would gain confidence for your metrics and say, okay, my metrics seem to work and whether I believe as a human that the deployment has finished, Argo Rollouts also says the same. And then once you are certain and confident, you make the switch and you give the power to Argo Rollouts to do something, but it's, you know, it's not something that happens in a day. You need to put it there and test it for some time. But I think that in most applications, unless you're doing something strange, uh, I think 
30 minutes are enough to decide if an application is successful or not. Uh, if you need uh, two days, something is wrong with your application. All right, thank you. Yes. Hi there. Uh, is the Argo CD UI capable of promoting rollouts? Uh, yes, so Argo Rollouts has a dashboard on its own that you can use on its own, but there is also an extension for Argo CD that presents the Argo Rollouts UI. So you can install this in your Argo CD, and if you want, give access to your developers and see what Argo Rollouts is doing in the Argo CD installation. But we can't keep it in CD if we wanted to. to not, Sorry? Not, we, could, we can promote rollouts from Argo CD if we didn't want to have that. It's still UI. Argo rollouts. Argo CD, Argo CD doesn't do anything. Argo CD just takes the rollout resource that I've shown, applies it to the cluster, and then stops doing anything, and Argo rollouts takes over. But I can promote the rollout from Argo CD? From the Argo CD UI, yes, you can do it with the extension I talked about. OK, gotcha. Thank you. Uh, maybe on this I need to say something. Several people try to adopt Argo rollouts, and the first thing they ask is, where is the API? Like, how do I call the API to make a decision? But this is missing the point. You should not call the API to make the decision. Argo rollouts should make the decision for you. That's the whole point. So, yes, you can do it, but developers should not roll back from the UI. Argo rollouts should roll back automatically. Yes. How do you handle uh, being able to deploy faster than you can actually roll out? So if you deploy once every 10 minutes and you're waiting 30 minutes for a decision, how do you handle that? Great question. So uh, Argo rollouts have several settings where once a promotion happens, it goes into a special context called promotion window or whatever it calls. So while this is running, things and actions you take are running a bit differently. For example, right now, if you make a deployment and then in a small amount of time you make another deployment, right now, Argo rollouts assumes that it's a hotfix, like you didn't want the previous deployment, and the next one is a hotfix. So if this matches your expectation, it works out of the box. Um, there is a big question that many people ask. Let's say you have 1.3 as a stable release, then you deploy 1.4, and in a quick succession, you deploy 1.5. Some people say that 1.3 should stay the stable version, and 1.5 is the new, and 1.4 was something that was completely broken. That's one thing. This is what Argo Rollouts does today. But some people say, no, you should promote you know, everything and move, let's say, the stack, and 1.4 should be stable. And this is not how Argo Rollouts works today. Uh, but it all comes back to your expectation and what do you think happens? In the same window also, if you do a, a rollback, uh, Argo rollouts will bypass the analysis that I've shown because it assumes that things are really, rot, uh, really ba bad. Let's roll back quickly. So it's a bit different. Yes? Awesome. Thank you. One more minute for questions. OK, thank you very much.